Birds are perfectly adapted to survive at ground level, where the air has all the right conditions for life. It's the right temperature, the right pressure, and it's got the right mix of gases. Down here, there's plenty of oxygen about, but after about three kilometres, the air's so thin that there's not enough oxygen to breathe. So if you didn't have this mask, you'd slip into unconsciousness. How about put it on? The atmosphere that surrounds our planet is made up of four key layers, each very different. Although I'm above the clouds, I'm still at the very bottom, in a layer called the troposphere. It's a narrow band, usually little more than 10 kilometers thick. The troposphere is a rich soup of warm, moist, oxygen-rich air. It's unstable, chaotic and unpredictable, but life depends upon it. And in just a couple of minutes, I'll be leaving it behind. So this is the height that jumbo jets cruise. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm now at 40,000 feet above the Earth. That's about 12 kilometers. Right here, the pressure is less than 20% of it is in the ground. And the temperature is about minus 60 degrees centigrade. Just a bit here, and that low pressure would mean that my body fluids would boil. I boil in seconds, so I'm pretty glad to be in here. Supersonic. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're about to go supersonic. Oh, that's a G spot. We are approaching 45,000 feet and we're about to cross an invisible boundary in the atmosphere. We're leaving behind the first layer the troposphere, and entering the stratosphere. A very different place. Here, the air is stable and exceptionally dry, so there's virtually no weather. The stratosphere is home to the ozone layer, which reduces the amount of lethal solar radiation reaching the Earth. We've reached 50,000 feet, or 15 kilometers. Nearly 90% of the gases that make up the atmosphere are below me. Absolutely nothing above me. Black sky. Black sky, well, dark blue. Yeah. This is the highest I've ever been. But the atmosphere stretches on high above me. It gradually fades away into space, which is another 85 kilometers above my head. Above are two more protective layers, so wispy and tenuous they barely exist. 
but they're both vital for our planet. Beyond the stratosphere, at about 50 kilometers, lies the third layer, the mesosphere. It's this layer that protects us from meteors. When we see a shooting star, it's actually a meteor burning up high in the atmosphere. The mesosphere is also home to a strange phenomena called noctilucent clouds. They're thin, wispy clouds that can only be seen at sunset when they're illuminated from beneath by the low sun. Finally, beginning at 85 kilometers, there's the fourth layer, the thermosphere. The atmosphere is so thin here that beyond 100 kilometers is declared to be the beginnings of space. It's in this layer that the Space Shuttle orbits the Earth. It's also out here that the Sun's lethal solar wind is intercepted by Earth's magnetic field and diverted towards the poles, creating the aurora. But there's another way of looking at the atmosphere. If you could unwrap the atmosphere from the surface of the Earth and put it all into a ball, this is what it would look like. In fact, the volume of the atmosphere is just 5% of the Earth. The layer that we spend our